Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here with something of a recap slash post-mortem of PAX, I guess. I want to talk a little bit about the footage we got, the games we played, and all that good stuff. So let's start with the bad news. The bad news is that we ended up losing a hard drive. And by losing, I mean it hit the floor and, well, the internals were all messed up. The good news is we should be able to get it fixed. The platters are intact, apparently, so it's just the internals that are messed up. The platters can be transplanted over in a clean room, which is why I'm sending over to Drive Service to get that done. That's going to cost a bloody fortune, but we figure there's so much good stuff on there that losing that wouldn't really be an option. So... The stuff that's going to be coming out from PAX will be in a really weird order. You'll see a lot of Day 3 stuff, and you'll see a lot of camera stuff, because that was on separate device. Day 1 and 2 direct feed, that will be delayed until we get the hard drive back, which we're anticipating to be within a week. Okay, so the good news. The good news is we actually got a lot of direct feed from PAX. This is fairly rare. Direct feed is, as you would imagine, a direct feed from the game, as opposed to an over-the-shoulder camera view. If you watch a lot of our Gamescom footage, you'll notice that the vast majority of that, in fact, possibly all of it, was actually camera. Now, camera's okay at times, it's not too bad, it depends on the lighting conditions. There are times when you get a nice matte screen that is flush in the way that we want it and is in a properly lit area, and it looks great. Yeah, you can barely tell that it's on a camera. And then there are the other times when the area is not very well lit at all, maybe the actual screen itself is reflective, which is really bad, and the view is perhaps not so good. So when we can, we avoid it. And at PAX, we were able to get a ton of direct feed. What that essentially means is we frapsed it. <laughs> we plugged in a hard drive and we frapsed it. Simple as that. A lot of games were actually willing to let us do that, which is pretty cool. There is some tech that also allows direct feed from an HDMI port, which would also allow us to do direct feed from consoles. Pretty damn pricey. We're looking into getting it for our next show, but that's the good news. The good news is we've got a ton of really good direct feed footage. We have some camera stuff as well, and as a result, what I've decided to do is title the PAX videos to tell you which is which. You'd think it would be obvious, but I can just see the comments now. Why does this look blurry? Blah, blah, blah. So we've got the little tag in the PAX footage. Either it'll say direct feed or it'll say camera. So that should indicate what is what. Bear in mind, camera stuff generally doesn't have game audio. Maybe it's picking up some of the ambient noise from the television itself, but usually it won't have game audio. All of the footage we got from PAX was in a dual commentary format. It was me plus a developer, and I was the one always playing the game. I'm pretty happy with how the footage turned out, honestly, and I'm looking forward to getting that other drive back so that I can show you all of it. But we'll be releasing PAX videos on a regular basis, one to two a day, I would think. Don't want to dump it all on the channel at once, because then you'll never watch it all, so that's not exactly ideal for me. And we are also back on regular schedule. Mailbox will be starting again tomorrow, which is the 5th, that's the Wednesday, and we'll be continuing as normal also normal wtf is content beta coverage and things like that so the next couple of weeks should be fairly content rich for you guys so we're really happy with how pax went it was actually a great show and if you ever get the chance to go to a pax event i would strongly recommend it it's very consumer orientated you can play pretty much everything and there's a lot of really cool stuff there it's not just big games in fact there's a lot of board game stuff a lot of card game and a ton of indie stuff and they got a lot of traffic, which was really awesome. People just wanted to try different games, and there were loads of them available to actually try. Needless to say, as a result, we played a lot of them and filmed a lot of them, so I'm really happy about that. Our E3 coverage was terrible. PAX, on the other hand, I think is going to be really good for a lot of you. It's really hard to pick a game of the show. Uh, I enjoyed MechWarrior Tactics, for instance, because I'm a huge MechWarrior fan, and this is actually the first really big piece of footage that anyone's ever seen, so expect that quite soon. That, thankfully, was on our Day 3 drive, so we didn't lose that. I think the game I enjoyed playing the most was probably Mark of the Ninja, which is coming out in a few days. It's by Clay, the guys that brought you Shank. It has a similar art style as well as really tight controls, just like Shank, but it's very much stealth orientated. Very much so. It's kind of like a mixture of Shank and Thief. It is awesome. It's coming out on Xbox Live in a few days. I did ask them about the PC port, and they are hoping to get one done. But of course, they're an indie dev, so it's one thing at a time for them. We also did a ton of planetside streaming, which actually used an aerial camera view was put in by the developers just before the show itself, so we were able to show battles in a very different way, which was absolutely fantastic. There are some highlights coming of that. The full stream is actually available for the most part over on twitch.tv slash totalbiscuit. I also did a stream on the twitch.tv official channel, which is twitch.tv slash twitch, obviously, and that was with Matt Higby, who many of you should know as one of the head honchos over at Planetside 2. Coverage was pretty good, honestly, and now the NDA has been lifted on the beta. I can bring 
bring you a lot more. And now I'm getting a chance to properly play it. I'm going to be bringing you, hopefully, a critique of the problems that I'm seeing with the game and some of the ways that they can be resolved. I think that SOE is being very, very receptive this time around to feedback. So I'll put in a few suggestions and see what you think. Planetside is not the perfect game as much as it is one of my most anticipated games because, of course, Planetside 1 was the game that I started on when it came to PC MMOs. So it holds a special place in my heart there. But I'm looking forward to bringing you more content. There's some special stuff coming for Planetside that I can't tell you about yet. That should be pretty fun. I'm also kind of happy to say that this is the end of the crazy event cycle. I'm not anticipating anything major for the rest of the month. There may be something, but it won't be huge, and it certainly won't disrupt the channel the way that MLG and PAX have. Quite frankly, if I had to do another event so soon, I'd probably throw myself down a well. Ugh. Events are definitely cool, there's no question about that, but they're very, very tiring. That said, PAX was awesome because I met a bunch of you, so thanks a lot for coming up to the booth and doing the whole photo signing thing. That was fantastic, it was great to meet you. Everyone aside from that one guy, there always has to be that guy that comes up to you while you're commentating, obviously speaking into a microphone to a bunch of people, and says, Dude, are you Total Biscuit? Can you sign this? Like... The, the, I'm wearing a headset and I'm obviously speaking. Please leave me alone. Thankfully, there weren't any others like that. But yes, that guy, you know who you are. You are a terrible person. As regards to the games we covered, we pretty much covered every game that we could get an appointment for that would actually let us film. So that pretty much discounts most of the big titles. So if you're looking for stuff for like Borderlands or Assassin's Creed 3, nope, they won't let you film Jack. So at the end of the day, I could go and play the games and then not show them to you, or I could just film something else, which makes more sense, I guess, for you guys. But what that does mean is we've got a lot of these cool indie games, as well as games that are, quite frankly, getting past the point of being called indie. I mean, Mark of the Ninja, for instance, Clay is an indie company, but these guys are so major now, after creating games like N Plus and Shank, that can you really call them indie anymore? We filmed a lot of games like that from really high quality companies that actually retain that indie status. So we're pretty much sitting in the middle there. It's very nice to be able to do that. Getting stuff like Hawkin, MechWarrior Tactics, Mark of the Ninja, Primal Carnage, Recoil, and all sorts of other good stuff like that is fantastic. I also have a couple of interviews. Didn't do too many because we mostly got appointments that allowed us to film the game. So we essentially did a dual commentary, as I like to call it, danger interviews. It's always nice to throw stuff at the developer while he's also trying to commentate over the game that tends to catch him a little bit off guard and it's like hey look at this this is a bug right what's wrong with that why don't you fix it that's always fun anyway interviews wise got an interview with the lead designer of the one and only hitman oh yes indeed io is still doing those games hitman absolution is the name of the game that was a pretty good interview and also did a really in-depth interview with the head honcho over at zombie as regards to blacklight retribution and the future of that we went in depth asked some pretty damn tough questions things that you you guys have been asking about like whether or not it's pay to win the things about incendiary ammo pricing so i think you'll enjoy that very much he was a cool guy and it was a pretty laid-back interview but he did answer the tough questions so i very much respect him for that so that's about it folks that's what's going to be coming from pax there is a ton of footage it's probably going to take us upwards of two weeks to get all of the footage on the channel in some way i'm back to regular schedule terraria is coming yes 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 podcast is going to be tomorrow at its usual time over on the live stream channel or of course you can watch the full vod over on youtube.com slash the game station when that actually comes out so back to normal as normal as normal gets anyway thanks a lot folks i'll see you next time